let's talk about marriage. Let's talk about marriage. St. Matthew chapter 19. Verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause a man shall leave mother and father and shall cleave to his wife and they twine shall be one flesh wherefore they are no more twine but one flesh what well, therefore God hath joined together let no man put asunder. If you go back into the Old Testament and look at how God really ordained for marriage to go, we would see that if we follow those instructions that was how marriage went was designed in the Old Testament by virgins then marriage situations especially in the Christian community would be a whole lot better. Virgins. That's why you see scriptures in the New Testament for Paul saying, if she have passed the flower of her youth, that means if she had reached reached maturity maturity then she's old enough to marry and by uh, and by biblical standards she should get married that's why this, that's why he go on to say it's better to marry than to burn burning lust But the Western church culture really don't hold to the identity of marriage that we see in the Old Testament and a glimpse of it in the New Testament. When a girl come of age, even boys, when they come of age 18, 19, when they reach, reach maturity, I guess in other, in uh, in some countries, the age of maturity adult is equal to adulthood. Here in the United States, around the world now, mature your your maturity, your adulthood is not determined by when a when a when a young lady start. Uh, her cycle. It's a law that they have to be at least 18 years of age. In some countries, it's younger than that. But that's the way it was structured under the Old Testament. If she was old enough, reached her cycle, she had reached mature. Adulthood, she old enough to get married. Why? Because she old enough to bear children. And 
in the marital laws were really strict in the Old Testament. I mean, y'all yeah, go back and study that. But we're not really held to that standard. But it would be good if we could rewind the clock back some 40, 50 years and go by that standard. But in the Western culture, due to slavery and all that stuff, we was unable to go by those standards because they didn't know the Bible, didn't have the scripture. They only knew what they knew. There was a whole lot of sexual Im, Im, immor, immorality going on 60, 50, 50, 40, 50, 60 years ago that we, our ancestors and whatnot, just didn't have control. Didn't have didn't have control of control. They didn't have the scriptures. They only knew God. So they just lived through the time that they lived through. Jim Crow, slavery, and all that stuff. They did what they was allowed. They didn't really have the Bible to know what right, you know, right from wrong. And that and that's and that's the, can be said about a lot of cultures, especially in the Western Hemisphere. Now, when you go to the far east and places like that. A lot of those cultures still practice that type of marriage set up that's described in the Old Testament. Some children, even in Arab countries and stuff like that, they use some some of that. They 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 children are already pre-married. They children spouses are already determined when they come of age. They be already connected to who they gonna who they gonna marry to. And when they and when that time comes, they just consummate their marriage. Some some cultures around the world practice that. They hold a virginity. They parents see to that. They live by strict rules. Jehovah Witness kind of take to that. I think Jehovah Witness may, I don't think it necessarily had to be virgins, but they make they uh, people go through a certain length, a certain period of time. They can get engaged, but I think they have to go through engagement for a number of years before they actually get married. But as we can read right here in St. Matthew, the disciples had a lot of questions concerning marriage because they was under, that law was established under the Hebrew under the uh, old covenant, that was a way to bypass evil, stuff like that. Those laws were strict. That's why I differ with the IUIC. Is certain stuff they want to talk about. They claim that IUIC to a certain degree, but it's a lot of stuff in there about evil and stuff like that that they that they don't want to be helped to. They want to they want to say they IUIC, but they want the freedom to do to, to be able to apply certain stuff to them and not apply whatever beneficial to them. But the time we living in after Christ and you know better you have grace that will marriage to law 
is not that strict. But God still prefer for us to do it right. Young girls grew up in a family. Young boys grew up and get married right. As soon as you become a duck, so you're supposed to be ready to get married. But the time that we are living in is much different from the time even back in the time of Jesus' days. Look at society we live in here now. Stuff move fast. Colleges, career, stuff like that. Educational stuff plays a role in a lot of marital stuff. And the Bible said marital, marriage, uh, marriage is honorable in all. That means saints is sinners. But you know, of course, the sinners are not really expected to honor marriage as the Bible described. So outside of marriage, if you're sleeping around, it could, that means if you're a believer, you knowingly commit sin. And you always can come out of this sin because that's what Jesus told the woman in the at the will. But the Bible, Jesus still in biblical is still right to get married as soon as possible to avoid fornication. Marriage outside, sex outside of marriage. Now, I got three grown children. My daughter is in college, second year in college, first year in college. My oldest son, he's grown. Far as I know, and I have every reason to believe that all of them was virgins. Up until the point they rich reached uh adulthood. They no longer officially under my curl and my wife curl, so they're grown, they passed eighteen. They grown. So far as we know, and I have every reason to believe they all was virgins. Until the time they reached adulthood. I I have every reason to believe my daughter is a virgin. My middle my my oldest son that drive trucks now. He's out of my hand. And he, he has a girlfriend and and what he done done what he have done since he been out of officially out of my curl, that's on him. I don't have nothing to do with that. And my son that's next to him, I'm pretty sure I have every reason to believe that he's still a virgin. And I have absolutely no doubt my daughter is a virgin. But if she's in college, she's got a bright college for career. She's going to school for a lot. She, man, she, and she's not even concerned about because I be asking it and, and teasing her about talking to boys on campus. She locked in. And that's good. How the Bible talks about if you can abstain, abstain. If sex is not an issue to you, if you're not burning in lust, the desire to have sex, then it's fine. The 
Bible don't say you have to get married. But if at an early age, but if you have an issue with lust and stuff like that, where you feel like you burning, that's what Paul says, better to marry, then you should go ahead and get married. Because you, that would give you avenue to fulfill, to fulfill the desires of your flesh right. Churches don't really push marriage now. I know some people, I got some relatives that have been in church. Me and my wife were just talking about it not too long ago. Younger, younger than us. They've been in church all their life. They grown, they got kids, and they still ain't got married. Together, haven't got married. Why not? Y'all sitting up in church. Religious about going to church, but y'all ain't got married yet. And I got half sisters on my on my dad's side that I've been trying to encourage to go on and get married for the last few years. She got a boyfriend. She 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 has six. She got children. She never been married. And I talked to her a while back about getting married. She said, well, when I go on and get married, I want to be right. I want to just yeah, but you you uh you got a boyfriend. You actually set, you know you got children so. How you want them qualifications now? But biblically, she just not, uh, you know, Daryl. But marriage is honorable. So, if you old enough to get married, you're not in college, or you don't, or you know, you about to go to college. You might need you 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 should y'all should think about this. A lot of y'all seeing dating, male or female, you know. You haven't crossed that line yet, or or, or you know, committing fornication. So you need to weigh the options. It might be better for you to go and get married. That way you can have a bond. And if you, you know, then it might be kind of, I understand people don't get married y'all hours away from each other, but you should think about it still, because if you a child of God and say you, and you have Christian values, you should you should look at them look at that and weigh that heavily. Marriage will uh, shield you from sexual. Will give you a you know a reason to be sexual pure, sexually pure. Well. Why am I married and he going to be six, seven hours away from me? Or my, why am I married and she going to be six or seven hours away from me? But, babe, it depends on how much you value the scriptures. First Timothy chapter four, verse three, forbidding to marry in commanding to abstain from meats which God have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Verse 1 of chapter 4 In the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter day, latter time, some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, 
hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. See, a lot of this stuff is, is being perpetrated to the through the church. Don't get married. You got a career. Go stay about your career before you fly. That's, you know. If a church going to approach it right, they really shouldn't approach it from, from either extreme. Approach it right. Push marriage. But don't force them into marriage, but push it. Because when they go out there in this society, that they uh, grew up in the church, and a lot of them really hold to the Christian values, they go out. They don't graduate to high school. When they graduate, go out to college. And go out to society. They gonna give heed to seduce to uh, other doctors. See what I'm saying? Oh, you ain't got to get married. You know. Why you gonna get married when you got options? You can, you know, float around and date and see. That's the that's the way the world gonna come at them. The Lord knows you go to college now and all that guy. The word it's gonna be heavy temptation, heavy. Girls trying to turn girls out in college. Boys turning boy. So. It probably something you really should think y'all should think about. School about the end, high school. A lot of people finna be graduating. They going to college this fall. Uh, children that grew up, folks that grew up in church. Need to think about this. Look at it real seriously. No Christian should have a mindset that they really don't want to get married. God created male for female. He created you to have desire to want to, to it's honorable to God to raise a family. He established that in, in the beginning. Be fruitful and multiply. The world have put us in such a strain that it's, I understand it's kind of hard to make them decisions and stuff like that. You got to worry about society now. But marriage is still good. So just think about it.